Welcome. Today we shall be looking at achondroplasia. Achondroplasia is a genetic bone condition that is characterized by dwarfism. It is one of the most common causes of short limb dwarfism. Children who are born with achondroplasia present with shortened arms and legs, an enlarged head, and an average sized torso. Their structure is notably shorter due to skeletal abnormalities. Achondroplasia is a genetic skeletal disorder that affects the endochondral ossification process and has an incidence of about 1 in 15 to 40,000 live births. It is quite a rare condition with a sporadic mutation and an autosomal dominant inheritance. Looking at the causes of achondroplasia, the onset of achondroplasia occurs in early fetal development where a genetic mutation disrupts standard conversion of the cartilages to bones. Achondroplasia arises from a mutation of a gene that is quite crucial in skeletal growth and development known as fibroblast growth factor receptor 3. A mutation to this gene causes a gaining of the fibroblast growth factor receptor functioning leading to inhibition of cartilage formation. Achondroplasia can be inherited in an autosomal dominant manner where the presence of a gene mutation from a single parent is sufficient for the child to inherit the disorder. In the pathophysiology of achondroplasia, during early fetal development, much of the skeleton comprises of a resilient and pliable tissue known as cartilage. As the fetus progresses, this cartilage undergoes ossification to form a bone. Achondroplasia, there is an impaired endochondral ossification due to a mutation of the fibroblast growth factor receptor 3 gene. These children will present with normal intramembranous ossification and the whole aspect of achondroplasia affects the long bones, the skull base, and the vertebra. As we said before, achondroplasia is inherited in an autosomal dominant pattern where if both parents are affected, there is a 25% chance of homozygous mutation, which usually is lethal. Advanced paternal age has been associated with an increased risk of new mutations responsible for achondroplasia. Patients who have achondroplasia present with short stature due to rhizomelia or a shortening of the proximal limbs, and other features including macrocephaly with the frontal bossing, a midverse hypoplasia, trident hand configuration, lambalodosis, and normal intelligence. The associated complications include a foramen magnum stenosis, which leads to central apnea and spinal stenosis. And this spinal stenosis can lead to a development of lower limb weaknesses. Other issues include recurrent ear infections, sleep apnea, bowed legs of the varum, joint hyperlaxity, and obesity. The diagnosis for achondroplasia could be either prenatally or postnatally. In the prenatal diagnosis, we can use an ultrasound from a second trimester with genetic confirmation via amniocentesis, and postnatally, a diagnosis is typically based on the clinical features, radiologic findings, and a confirmatory FGFR3 gene testing. The differential diagnosis for achondroplasia include a skeletal dysplasia, for example, hypochondroplasia, thanatophobic dysplasia, and diastrophic dysplasia. A management of achondroplasia requires a multidisciplinary team approach where routine monitoring includes growth tracking, neurological exams, and sleep studies. Surgical interventions may be needed for decompression or rare limb lengthening, and a supportive care involves therapy, weight gain, and psychosocial support. Prognostically, with appropriate medical care, individuals with achondroplasia genetically have a normal life expectancy and an early detection and intervention improves the quality of life and functional outcome.